Hi everyone, I'm Gunnar Grosch and welcome to another video on chaos engineering for serverless. This week we're gonna look at adding some more chaos engineering experiments to serverless, not only latency inject injection as we've done previously. So we're gonna try to do some, some other chaos engineering experiments as well. So in the last video we talked about blast radius containment, how to perform our experiments in a controlled fashion so that we don't create an, an outage of the entire application, so that we only inject failure into the function or the part of the application where we want to inject it. Um, we also made it possible to do that using Adrian Hornsby's latency injection layer by adding per function control of the latency injection. And we did that by using parameter store and environment variables. We also made it a bit easier to deploy the, the latency injection layer and that we did by using the serverless framework. And of course we did a demo of the, the serverless chaos engineering app. So since then, what has Adrian Hornsby been up to? Well, he, he noticed the video that we did uh, and uh, I suppose he got inspired. So he has worked on his latency injection layer a bit and added more functionality. So first off, he, he merged the changes that we created in the last video to his Lambda layer. And that was really cool. Uh, but then he added functionality, starting off with HTTP error status code injection using error code. So now we're able to add uh, status codes to our function. So instead of just injecting latency as before, we're now able to inject a status code into the function. He also added exception injection uh, using exception message. So that we're able to inject uh, certain exceptions into the function so that we more or less uh, break the function while running. Uh, he also added functionality to control the rate of failure. So instead of injecting failure each and every time the function invokes, uh, we're able to, to set the rate of failure. That is, um, it perhaps should be invoked on, on half of the invocations instead. He also renamed the layer. So now it's called failure injection layer, which perhaps makes sense since not, it's not just latency injection anymore. So looking at the layer, the latency injection part is more or less the same as before. So we're still able exactly in the same way as we did before to, to decorate our functions with the latency injection part. So we're able to add latency into our functions. But then we have the new functionality in the layer, that is status code injection. So we can now decorate our functions uh, and add a status code. Uh, we can select which error code to inject uh, and that will then be, be injected into our function. And then we also have the exception injection so that we can uh, raise an exception into our function and with the message that we choose. So these add-ons to the, the layer is really cool. They are really cool because now we can perform more chaos engineering experiments than we did before. Not only latency anymore, that is. And as I said, he's also added the rate functionality. So we can choose how often this should be added, not on every invocation, but on half or quarter or whatever we choose. So that's really cool. We still have control of the latency injection or the, the failure <laughs> injection, I should say now, by using uh, a parameter that we store in parameter store. Uh, but now we have a couple of uh, additions to it besides just saying if it's enabled or not uh, or adding the, the delay that we want in our latency. We can now uh, input our error code like in this example where we have a 404 error code and we can add the exception message in this case the one that says I failed and then we have the rate. Uh, and, and rate in this case, one means that it's on every invocation, so 100%. It, 
if we instead put 0 0.5 it would mean 50% so half of the time. Adrian did a talk on serverless chaos engineering in London last week and he used the demo app there. Uh, he also added a few things which uh, we merged into the repository and have kept now into this new version. First off, uh, the variables that you had to change in the serverless YAML file has now been moved into a separate file, which makes it a bit easier. Um, he also updated the functions with the new decorators so that we have the possibility to add stuff status code and uh, the exception injection. So thanks for that, Adrian. And uh, the app now has a new UI, which, well, it looks a, lit, uh, a bit better, I would say. Um, we also have a bit more visibility into what happens. So when we're doing the experiments, we can see a bit more what happens. Um, and also I made sure to enable X-Ray by default so that X-ray doesn't have to be enabled separately afterwards. Uh, you can now use that for both API Gateway and Lambda. But instead of just talking about it, let's jump into the demo app and see what it looks like. So this is the new version. Um, we have our three functions uh, and they're doing what they're supposed to do at the moment. Uh, every five seconds, they are calling the API Gateway um, which uh, invokes a lambda function, which gets an item from the DynamoDB table and, and returns a URL for an image. And that image is then loaded. And so this is done by using Ajax. Uh, and the three functions, as I said before, uh, they have the latency, the status code and the exception injection in this case. But at the moment uh, we don't have um, the, the experiment or the latency injection enabled. As you can see, we can see the parameter here while hovering. And the same for status code and for exception. They are uh, disabled at the moment. So uh, we can also invoke the function by just clicking on each one as well. If we don't want to wait the five seconds. So that's the new version of the Serverless Chaos demo app, uh, which we'll be using now. So let's jump on over to VS Code um, and just look at how we're using the new Lambda layer. Uh, for function one, uh, we have imported the Lambda layer, Chaos Lib, uh, and then we've just decorated our function with, in this case, corrupt delay. Uh, for function two, we instead have decorated with corrupt status code for status code injection and function three corrupt exception for exception injection. So that's all there is to it on the functional level. Uh, the rest is handled by the lambda layer uh, and by using the parameter that we have in parameter store. Uh, so it's fairly simple. So let's not wait uh, a second longer. Let's start with the first experiment. So what we want to do is enable uh, function one so that we're injecting latency into function one. Um, at the moment it's running and um, each invocation is about 180 milliseconds. So then let's use CLI and use AWS SSM put parameter to, to just overwrite the existing parameter. Um, the change here is that we're going from is enabled false to is enabled true. And as you can see, we have a de delay of 400 milliseconds in this case. There we go, and new version. And now the next invocation, there we go. We now have uh, about 600 milliseconds, so it's added uh, 400 milliseconds to each invocation. So that seems to work. Uh, we can still see that status is 200. We have success. Um, but the parameter is updated, so is enabled true. So that's cool. That's our first experiment. And uh, now, of course, we can change it, this and add a bit more latency to it. Um, and this works in the same fashion as um, in the previ previous videos where we've done latency injection. So 
Now it runs with um, more than one second delay um, on function one. So that's cool. It still works. Uh, it doesn't break the application. So let's try uh, to do it on function two then instead. Uh, function two was the error code um, injection. So in this case, we have error code that says 404. So when we're running this or when we're uh, putting this parameter, uh, we should start to see errors in the application, hopefully. So updated and now function two, there we go. So now function two responds with a status 404. That is an error. So we're not getting any new images anymore. Uh, we are not even getting a, a new, um, we're not getting the parameter anymore, we're not getting a new image, and we're not getting a, a new time for each invocation. So function two gives a 404 error on each invocation. That's really cool. So by using this in parameter store, we can inject whatever error code we want to be able to see how the function behaves. Um, and, and this is, of course is important when we're doing um, integrations between services to see how does my application react on an error code from the, the integration. So then we have function three. And function three is the exception injection. Um, so let's change to function three instead. And in this case, we have exception message I failed. So let's run it and see what happens. There we go. And now we're getting a status zero error. So that means that uh, this function, it is an error. Uh, it doesn't work as intended. So we're not getting any new images there either. And we're not seeing the parameter anymore. Um, and in this case, if we're moving over to the Lambda console and looking at function three, uh, we can then go to the CloudWatch logs and see what they say. Uh, we have invocation that are working, but then all of a sudden we're getting an ex exception message uh, and with the message that we had in the parameter store, I failed. So that's cool. That means that our function is corrupting. So we're getting exceptions. Uh, and by doing that, we're actually breaking our application. So it doesn't really work anymore. Um, so that's cool. Now we've tried all three functions. We tried all three injections, the latency, the status code and the exceptions. What we have left then is to look at the rate. So um, if we look at the parameter, um, we can see that we have the part that says rate, in this case one, that means that we're injecting the failure on every invocation. So we can change that to 0.5 in this case. So that means that on function three, it should uh, inject the failure on about half of the invocations. So let's try it. There we go. And now we just need to wait. Okay, so we have a success on this one. And the next invocation, success. The next invocation, error. So that's cool. So it seems to work with the rate functionality as well. And so we can try it on one of the others as well. Let's try it on function one. Let's add a rate at 1.5 as well. So about half of the invocations. There we go. And now it's still at 200, of course. Now uh, the time is 191 milliseconds, 188 milliseconds. And then perhaps we should have one with, yes, which has a delay of a thousand milliseconds. So that's cool. So the rate functionality works as well. Um, so we've now tried all three parts uh, that are new within the Lambda layer. So really cool. So that was it for this video where we've looked at uh, the improvements that Adrian Hornsby has done on the failure injection layer. 
uh, where he has added functionality uh, with error code injection and with exception injection and also the possibility to control the rate of the failure injection. Uh, we've also looked at the new version of the serv serverless chaos demo app and, and how that works and we've also done a short demo of using the new functionality within the failure injection layer. So cool, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure to also keep an eye on Twitter. Uh, I'm pretty sure that there will be new things around the failure injection layer from Adrian uh, quite soon. So thank you very much once again and bye bye.